Well, good day to everyone. In this video, I would like to show the servicing of this old musical pocket watch. My research shows that this watch was made likely in the 1820s. Some sources say 1820s, some sources say 1830. So my guess is it's somewhere in that range. This is a pocket watch that is equipped with a cylinder escapement and has not just the time function and the music function, but also has a quarter repeater as well. When I received this pocket watch, it was completely seized up. The balance didn't turn and um, all the, the key wind uh, mainsprings were wound tight and nothing seemed to work. As I would discover in the course of taking it apart, it was simply a matter of old oil drying up and causing everything to seize and not allowing it to unwind. In the servicing of this watch, it's been a benefit to uh, live in this day where I could bit by bit and piece by piece take uh, record the uh, disassembly of the watch on either a smartphone or on a tablet using the camera, taking a picture of the watch uh, as it first is and then taking a couple pieces out, taking a picture of those pieces and then taking a picture of the movement again and alternating back and forth between the poot pieces that you take out and then the watch as it evolves from a complete watch into a, a deconstructed watch or a disassembled watch. This provides a reference uh, as you go and later put the watch back together and this is a, a wonderful thing in our day that we can use and provides a tutorial, a self-made tutorial when it comes to disassembly and reassembly of the watch. This is helpful not only because we know what parts go where when it comes to reassembly, but it also helps you to figure out in what order the watch should be reassembled because in a watch that is as complex as this one, the order in which things goes back together uh, really is important. And uh, for a complete disassembly, we want to also take apart the, the mainsprings, uh, mainspring barrels, and also photograph these. So when it comes to reassembly, you know um, which way the barrel hook is supposed to go because um, in this watch, in this particular watch, the the barrel assembly or the barrel arbor assembly comes part uh, the arbor from the actual barrel hook so we want to make sure that we've got the hook pointed in the right direction when when we come to reassembly and um, so we have three mainspring barrels the the musical mainspring the time mainspring and then of course the repeater mainspring and last of all is the balance bridge and the balance itself and and then we are uh, then we have a situation where all the parts are laid out and I really strongly recommend laying out parts like this and and either videoing or picturing uh, taking pictures of the parts laid out in order too. Now in a watch like this that is very complex, I don't always, and I didn't with this one, uh, wash the screws. Uh, with so many parts, it is important that the, the appropriate part be matched with its matching screw. And so when you have this uh, photographic uh, reference here, uh, after you reduce the parts to a basket full uh, for the cleaning, 
uh, once they're cleaned, you can lay them back in their uh, place and with their appropriate screw. That is very important with a piece that is as complex as this is. Before we go on to the cleaning and 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 uh, which which I do off camera and the reassembly, I do want to address one point, and that is. When I first opened the watch, I immediately noticed what appeared to be uh, a missing part or some parts that were missing. And when I gave the estimate, I gave an estimate based on replacing those parts. Now, what I've come to recognize is that that was probably not parts that were... Um, lost or discarded but rather if you look at the the barrel cover here I suspect that the the one recess that we see here uh, that is exposed and doesn't has the have the stop works in it is actually um, the original recess in which the screw hole got stripped out of it and uh, a previous repair instead of uh, making that hole such that a screw will hold in it actually cut in a new recess in into the barrel cover and you'll note in the pictures that one recess still has its original gold plating in it and the other recess does not and and that's the one that does not i suspect is the newly machined um, recess and you'll notice that the screw hole is smaller there so uh, contrary to my initial thoughts um, i did not make any parts to uh, re to replace there but we're just going to keep the the newly machined recess uh, for the place for the stop works and leave the old one as is and then when it comes to reassembly like i've already uh, referenced and explained it's simply a matter of of going through your pictures in reverse order and knowing in which order to reassemble things but um, also where they went um, and it's a very simple reassembly after the cleaning so i thought i'd explain the function uh, how the music box works and it starts and is tripped by this uh, little paw or little cam right here and this goes around once an hour and it trips this so this is the first um, lever that it interacts with and it is an assembly it's it's pivoted right here um, but part of the assembly is this branch down here that goes down all the way and this is pivoted here so it swivels back and forth but it's pivoted here this is the spring that holds this portion uh, perpendicular to it and this spring uh, is constantly applying pressure pulling the spring over in that direction to the left um, down here this part of it uh, interacts with a pin that is on this uh, cam um, this pin uh, moves moves this lever the whole assembly as it's pivoted up here it moves it to the left or to the right and down further here it um, this little notch interacts with the pin here um, lifting lifting this lever which is the the lever that stops the whole function of the music box so you can see that there is a pin underneath that goes through the bridge and engages with the gear stopping the the music box and the uh, the the power running through the gears so 
um, when this lever falls into this slot, that's when the music box stops. This here is, um, you can see that's a click. It is a um, an off button that will keep this assembly over to the right hand side and uh, prevent uh, the music box from functioning it at all. So this is on on right now. If I were to click it over, it would turn it off by, by holding this lever over to the right. So let's watch the function of this. So by lifting it, you are disengaging this portion of this lever with the pin and allowing this portion to come over and interact with this pin and then when it's released this will push it down uh, starting starting the music box and then as long as 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 this portion is riding the surface of the cam um, the music box will function it will continue to function until it falls back into the slot And here you can see that the this pin is pushing this out, disengaging it from this, and allowing this rack or this um, lever to fall then into the slot. There is on the side of the case a little uh, lever down here or a little uh, slide, which allows uh, the person to manually start the music box and and not have to wait for the top of the hour when it will run and you just push the slide down it allows that lever to lift and then if you don't disengage it if you don't push the slide back the music box will just run perpetually until the mainspring is wound down so give it a little time for it to for it to clear that slot and then you can uh, push the slide back and it will run one circuit. Now uh, allow me just a few moments to admire the craftsmanship of watchmakers 200 years ago that created a music box such as this or a musical uh, mechanism such as this who without the the means of uh, certainly our modern means of of computer aided uh, drafting and computer aided machining were were able to create this um, without even with electricity. Uh, remember, this was in a time when everything was done by uh, the light of a window and either pedal-powered lathes and machinery or machinery that was run maybe on water wheels next to a river or something of the sort. Um, we consider them crude and primitive, uh, but when you look at craftsmanship like this, it's hard not to be impressed. This, unlike modern cylinder-type music boxes, uh, the musical tines are not all in one line, but they're actually staggered along the way. And each one of those musical tines was likely hand filed and hand fitted to this mechanism. And if we look at the, the disc instead of a cylinder, um, all those pins had to be precisely put in there, not on simply one side, but there's musical tines and pins on both sides. So the ability to do this um, is, is something that I greatly, greatly admire. 
Now about the repeater, I'm not going to go in depth explaining how the repeater works. There's actually a lot more moving parts in here and it's, it's quite a complicated piece. I will likely in the future sometime do a video uh, explaining better how repeaters function. Maybe a series of videos explaining the different types of repeaters. Suffice to know that this is a quarter repeater uh, that has a plun that that is a plunger type repeater as opposed to a slide uh, engaged repeater. And for uh, speed regulation, it has a pinion that is set in an eccentric screw or an eccentric bushing that uh, regulates the speed of the repeater. And the, the plunger for this uh, to engage the repeater is actually the pendant of the pocket watch. And something that I want to draw your attention to is that there is a slide along the outside of the case that can, can be engaged that will lock the pendant so the repeater will not be engaged and uh, you can't push in and um, cause the repeater to go. Now that the watch is assembled in the case, I'll take you through the winding of the watch. You'll note on the back that the keyholes are pretty plain. Uh, the one is marked music and the other one is for winding the time and both are clearly marked which direction you should turn the key. Something I wish every key wind watch had marked. And you'll notice here that the balance had stopped. The winding arrangement, the, the winding mechanism on this watch is such that when you wind the time mechanism, the, the balance will sometimes stop. Notice when I'm winding what the balance wheel is doing. Um, when you have the, the pressure of winding, it causes the gear train to reverse in this watch, and thus slowing the the time or completely stopping it. Uh, the only thing you need to do to get it restarted then, uh, as I just did previously, was to give the watch just a little twist and that'll get the balance wheel back moving again. Also note that there is no uh, setting of the watch from the back of the case. Uh, no keyhole, no opportunity, so what we have to do is go around to the front of the case and set the time from the front. And here's a quick look at the slides. The one towards the pendant is for locking the repeater and the one at the bottom is for starting the music box. Now on this watch, the front bezel fits actually quite tightly, so it, it takes a little bit of effort to get that loosened so you can set the time from the front. But right up by the pendant, I like to put a knife in and with firm pressure, um, push and once you feel the blade is in there, doing a little bit of prying and you should have it pop right open for you. And then it's a simple matter of using the same key that you use for winding the watch to then set the time. And when it comes to closing the front bezel, again, it's tight. So what I like to do is um, start putting pressure on the bezel uh, towards the bottom, towards the hinge, and move that pressure up towards the pendant until it snaps.
And here we go, reassembled and working. And as I usually do, I like to hold on to it for a couple weeks minimum to make sure that it's keeping reasonable time as well as uh, check the repeater from time to time, make sure it's functioning pro appropriately, um, chiming the correct time, and testing the general function of the whole watch, including, in this case, the music box as well. Um, so that's it for this video. I want to thank everybody for watching. And if you haven't seen my previous video, I discuss... Uh, replacing, I had to replace four or five screws in this timepiece, replace and repair, and so you might want to check out that video, and um, I'll leave a link for that in the description down below. So thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll catch you the next time.